Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Also, I must say, I really don't like to give public presentation, <laughs> uh, but I think this one might be useful for someone, so let's go for it. Um, I divided my presentation in uh, two parts. The first part, I'm going to try to give you an idea of what my job is about now, and the second part, um, I'm going to try to go through the practical steps of um, how did I get there. Um, just a bit about myself. As uh, Monica said, I'm an uh, administrator, of chief operation officer at the Center for Integrative Genomics at the University of Lausanne for more than 10 years now, actually. Before, I was during around three years at the Federal Administration in Bern in an office which does technology assessment. This was uh, evaluating new technology to give advice to politicians as a helpful decision. And before, uh, I've been roaming quite a bit in uh, studies and research, um, doing a di diploma at the Biocenter in Basel at the time, and then starting a PhD there, which I didn't finish. I moved to Cambridge as a technician during two years, and then I came back to Basel, the lab moved to Fribourg, and then I switched out. So what's my job now? There's many different administrators in research. Mark will give a different point of view. What you see here is how I would write my job description now. But um, to give you a better idea, I think I'm going to take a few examples, real examples from just yesterday. So I had a meeting with the director of the department, for example, talking about uh, retiring professors. There's quite a few who have to retire in the next year in the department. They don't really want to, so we have to see how we deal with that. Um, I also had a meeting with uh, one technician who works in the service I'm responsible for, who wants to resign from her position, so I will have to see what are the consequences and what we are going to do with that. I had a phone call from the human resource about an assistant who contacted them, who's deeply unhappy in his lab, and we have to see what, how serious that is and how we can cope with the situation and do, it, do the best for everybody. I had a professor popping in my office to ask if we can finance some expensive equipment. The end of the year, given the structure of public finances, is often a good time to go fishing, actually. <laughs> they know it. And I had a long uh, discussion with my secretary about a new website we are trying to put up. Well, we are putting on, that is a long word, and we are almost ready to do it. But of course, there's a lot to check before we, we can do that. I find that my job is fun, but there's, of course, two sides on the coin. So I let you read what's less fun about it, and I'm going to focus on what's fun, because that's what keeps us going. Uh, it's a problem-solving job. When people come in my office, it's usually something they couldn't solve by themselves. So I need to learn, I need to think, I need to see what are the resources and what are the possibilities, and that's something I like. There's many different things to do. The things I listed to you just before from yesterday are actually just a small part from what I did yesterday. So even if there's something boring, it cannot last too long. It <laughs> has to move on. I have a lot of contact with people, which personally is something I really like. And it's often people who are clever and who are involved at every level. Of course, it's interesting to talk to researchers who are very involved people, but a lot of the staff in the department also is quite involved and has a sense of belonging with the department. That, that's something very nice and yeah, very interesting to discuss. I have quite a bit of freedom. Um, I can propose things, I can implement things, and that's of course a nice position to have. I don't have just to apply what people tell me, I can really go for something. And I'm working in public research and education, which for me is something important. That fits my value. Working in public research is something I do like. And of course, working in close contact with research is something very interesting. I'm very interested in what is going on, and I have a possibility to live with it. How did I get there? <laughs> so, um, as I said before, I've been around in biology, in research quite a bit, in different places, and I really enjoyed it. But it wasn't for me. Um, at some point, I took the decision to quit. I'm not going to go right now too much into that. 
but of course, deciding to make that transition is um, not an easy thing. And how did I go for it? Uh, there was a, quite a long process of uh, trying to see in what posi position I could project myself, with whom do I want to work, who do I want to see every day, and where can I make a difference, where do, do I not have the same CV as everybody else. For me, um, looking for a job, actually really getting down the tedious work of writing the CV, writing the cover letters, was very helpful because that helped me to define uh, what I wanted to do, how I felt with it, but also to see in my CV much more than I could see at first sight. Um, I also did a professional personal assessment, and that was very helpful, that some professional will help me to go through what I did and what I feel, and to define better what, uh, what my objectives are. I, of course, talked to people who had a similar background and got a job out of research to see how they managed it. And I also um, asked for short meetings with people I didn't know, but who had jobs that I might be interested to do. Um, people are usually quite ready to give 15 minutes of their time to talk to you, and that's really helpful. So I went to talk to people in Roche or in Novartis or in journalism for that, and that's, uh, that's a good thing to do. That was really helpful. What did I learn in academia? Well, I think you're going during that day and the next um, hear quite a bit about that, and I have nothing very special to say about it. For me, for the job I do now, it's clear that having to, knowing the priorities of research, knowing the culture of researcher is something which is very important. Also, um, in research, you do get organized, you do planning, and you do learn to take decisions. And that's something which is very important in any job, to know when to decide something and how you go for it. And of course, you face quite a bit of adversity. That's the good side of it. You get persistent, you get to know yourself, and you get some self-confidence. How did I get the job? Well, the first job I got outside of academia in Bern I responded to an ad, but it was an ad for training. I did insist heavily because I was considered overqualified for that trainership and too old. Uh, I managed to get it. And of course, being a trainee was not well paid, but coming out of academia where I was paid 50% was still all right. I could still afford that during a while. <laughs> and then I got a position as a full scientific collaborator. The job I have now at the UNIL, I also responded to an ad. I didn't know the people who were choosing the person at all. What helped a bit is that I knew some people who were um, at the University of Lausanne at the time and with whom I could talk to define better what is expected from the position, define better with whom I would talk, what are the expectations, and so on. And that was definitely very helpful. I put the ad uh, here from the time um, just to show that every experience was useful to get that job, I think. The experience in Bern, in Bern was useful. They asked for someone who knew, knew the institution of, uh, of science, and that's something I learned quite well there. The experience in academia, of course, was useful um, because having been around in different departments, university, or even countries, I could at least show that I knew how the system works from different points of view. Having a PhD would have been useful, um, but since I had that experience in academia, I think I could, I could counterbalance it quite well. Uh, if I write here that having a PhD would still be useful, it's because in the job I have, and especially at the beginning, it was sometimes a bit difficult uh, to get people out of the equation of a woman administration secretary. And people had sometimes some difficulty to understand why I was in those meetings and why I was talking so much, you know. <laughs> um, now I must say, not having a PhD also makes some contact in my job easier because with, to get the trust or to get the confidence from people who don't have a PhD, sometimes it's easier if you don't have one. They don't have that barrier to talk to you. And the job became something quite different over the years. Um, it was already from what was on the 
the ad at the time, it was uh, focused on communication, but there was many, many things which were not in the ad, which were immediately um, needed. It was a new department, a new center, it was very exciting, everything had to be done. Communication was a very annexed thing to what was needed at the time. But, yeah, I'm going to come. Um, what did I learn Let, later? Of course, there's plenty of things I learned. Um, in Bern, I learned, also I was lucky in the first year, I was in Lausanne. I did a course in research management over one year, several weekends, and it was very useful. Of course, um, or I thought I had some hint how to do these kind of things, but really having courses with professional being taught how to do finances, what about human resources, and so on, was very useful. I think I had to change my attitude a bit. Um, I think I was a bit absolute in science. Um, in science, being the one who is right uh, is, of, is often very important. When you're dealing with people, when you're trying to find a solution to problems, whether you're right or not is not necessarily the priority. Uh, there's some other ways to solve problems than just being right. One point I would like to say here, and that's a question I have for myself, if I had faced um, more consciously earlier that I would leave academia, I might have profited better from that time to learn some skill which would be useful outside academ academia. I think luckily there's more and more of those possibilities when one is within academia, and I think it's really something to consider. And last, advices. Advices are something very personal, and they sound quite paternalistic, but some of them I got, I still use them uh, quite often. The first, oh, come on, make up your mind, it's not the end of the world. That actually comes from my aunt, Aunt Olga, old one, <laughs> who born in the 20s in deep Switzerland like I am, but much earlier, moved to open a hotel in uh, Wales, South Pembrokeshire of all places, in the 40s. Uh, she obviously had a very different uh, view on life than my parents had, where I was more educated in being quiet, um, insecure woman. And when she told me quite early, come on, make up your mind, that helps, I still carry it with me. It's nice. Of course, like the other thing, it has a, maybe a downside, um, maybe some decision I took too promptly. Maybe I shouldn't have left my PhD, I don't know, I mean, now it doesn't matter anymore. Or maybe I took some too slow, maybe I stayed in academia too long as well. Those are, of course, things of life we cannot judge anymore at some point. The second one, everything can be interesting, just get into it. This was uh, when I was trying to do my PhD and my boss completely made me shift topic, which of course made me completely crazy about it. And a friend of mine, um, who's still a friend of mine, a postdoc in the lab, told me, oh, come on, stop it. Everything can be interesting, just do it now. And that's, I find, is helpful and mostly true, or rather, um, things you can usually twist things in a way which will make them interesting to you. When I was saying the job I have now is quite different from the ad that was there at the time, it's also because I contributed in twisting that job in a way I'm more comfortable with and more able to do it. And the third one, I use it too much, I guess, every day a bit. At the end, it works, because when people come with problems, I have a tendency to say, whoa, okay, but it will work at the end, which is, of course, very easy to say, especially when you're at the end and you look backwards. Uh, it does take a lot of time and so on, but having the confidence that at the end, it works and you'll be happy with what you do is important, and I think it's true for most of us. Voilà. <laughs>